Osteomyelitis, bone infection. Osteomyelitis is an infection of the bone. It may be an incurable disease. So what really happens with bone infection or the osteomyelitis? Usually, the bacteria causes the infection in the bone. Staph aureus is the most common organism in adult. The leukocytes, which is the white blood cells, are attracted to the area and secrete enzymes in an attempt to kill the bacteria. The blood flow to the area is decreased and a devitalized necrotic bone is formed and that is called the sequestrum. The sequestrum is an infected dead bone resulting from osteomyelitis and here there is a representative example of a sequestrum which is the nidus of infection. Haversian canals surround blood vessels and nerve cells throughout the bone. The sequestrum has no connection to the normal bone through the Havergian system. And because this sequestrum is avascular or a dead piece of bone, antibiotic cannot reach the sequestrum or the bacteria. In fact, the bacteria enters the bone cells and hides inside the bone cells. Antibiotics alone may not help due to difficulty in penetrating the necrotic area. The involucrum is a new bone formation around the sequestrum. The body is trying to seal off the infection by forming a new bone. The sequestrum will drain through a sinus, and the draining sinus is called the cloaca. Biopsy of the sinus is not a representative of the infection. Multiple deep samples, preferably bone biopsy and cultures, are needed. Biopsy of the sinus is important in long-standing cases of osteomyelitis to rule out the formation of a squamous cell carcinoma. What are the associated medical conditions? Dialysis, malnutrition. Nutrition is an important part. Diabetes, IV drug use, or if the patient is immunosuppressed. Unusual organisms for osteomyelitis. In sickle cell anemia, patient may get salmonella, however, staph aureus is the most common. In patient with IV drug use, acromioclavicular or stenoclavicular joint infection, patient may get pseudomonas. Patient may get pseudomonas through a puncture wound through the shoes. Immunosuppressed patients and patients in parental nutrition may get fungal osteomyelitis. In children, eosinophilic granuloma, Ewing sarcoma, and acute osteomyelitis may resemble each other. Patient may come with pain, fever, tenderness of the area, and also the patient may have an increased sedimentation rate and leukocytosis. Osteomyelitis can also be confused with a healing fracture or with a benign or malignant tumor. Sometimes a biopsy is necessary for the diagnosis. Only 50% of chronic musculoskeletal infection will have elevated inflammatory markers. Classification of osteomyelitis. Acute, usually within two weeks. Chronic, after several months. Subacute, from four weeks to several months. There is a Cerny Mader classification system. Three types of patients and four types of bone infection. Three types of patients. 
A is healthy, B compromised, can be locally compromised, like the patient has sinus tract or free flaps or decreased blood supply, or systemically compromised, the patient with comorbidities. And the C is severe systemic compromise, the host in whom treatment will lead to greater morbidity than the infection itself. Then the types of bone infections. There are four types of bone infections. Number one, medullary. Number two, superficial. Number three, localized defect with a stable bone. Number four, diffuse infection with involvement of bone stability. Principles of surgical treatment for osteomyelitis. Treatment of osteomyelitis is usually a combination of surgical debridement of the necrotic non-viable tissue plus administration of culture-specific antibiotics. One, open the involucrum, which is the new bone. Two, remove the sequestrum, which is the dead bone. Three, sussurize the bone. Make sure a pathological fracture is not created. Stabilize the bone if needed. External fixator is usually preferred. Fill the cavity with bone chips, cement, or muscle flap if needed. Intravenous antibiotics are usually given for a period of six weeks and it is usually organism specific. The recurrence of the infection is high. It occurs in about 30% of cases. Important topics. MRSA osteomyelitis. Temperature more than 38. WBCs count more than 12,000. Hematocrit less than 34%. Seriactive protein more than 13. These four independent predictors differentiate between MRSA and MESA osteomyelitis, with 92% chance of having MRSA if all the four are present. If you have MRSA, you give vancomycin or clindamycin. And in MRSA, you will have a higher incidence of DVT than other causes of osteomyelitis. Older children, 8 years old or more, with MRSA osteomyelitis and CRP more than 6 has a 40% incidence of DVT on presentation. The presence of pantom valentine leukocidin gene encoded in strains of MRSA bacteria may explain the deep venous thrombosis. Understanding the principles of treatment of chronic osteomyelitis. Careful workup and staging of the bone and the host. Utilizing the CRNA major classification is important to develop a successful treatment plan. The principles of treatment of chronic osteomyelitis includes So you do debridement first. You will do dead space management usually by putting cement a spacer with antibiotics. Then you will do soft tissue coverage. And then later on, you remove the cement spacer. Then you're dealing with the bone defect, usually by adding bone graft. And during the treatment, you'll figure out about the stability of the bone and you'll add external fixer if needed. The muscular technique, which is called induced membrane, Antibiotic cement spacer followed by the soft tissue coverage and we do stage bone graft at 6 to 8 weeks later. That induced membrane, then later we do stage bone graft. The membrane secretes BMP2, bone morphogenic protein, and VEGF and other growth factors which peak around four weeks after membrane induction. Thank you very much. I hope that was helpful.